So let's answer the questions now. So it says find the growth rate accurate to seven decimal places. No, no, no. I'm happy with four. Uh, find the function that models the number of bacteria. We already did. Uh, part C. Find the number of bacteria after four hours, please. So A of 4 is 15,916.59. Yeah, I cannot um, bacteria. Okay. I can round up. It doesn't give me another bacteria. After how many hours will the number of bacteria reach 50,000? Please. The 86E is then it's raised to 0.1539 times 4. Is that you doing your calculator? Oh, let's do it. So 8600 multiplied by E raised to in parentheses uh, 0.1539. Multiply by four, close the parenthesis, and press enter. <coughs> Fifteen nine one six. You can put point six. I'm fine, but how do you put e next to it again? So it's right here. It's the same key with natural log, oh. the inverse function, Just don't, don't. with the second, second e to the x. Is that okay? So now we're asked to determine when, how many hours are needed for the bacteria to become fifty thousand. Correct. So I have 50,000 equals 8600 e to 0.1539 t. And please tell me what you get. Get. So 500 over 86 with natural log equals 0 0.1539 T. So T equals natural log 500 over 86.1539. How much did we get? Okay, hours. Very good. Any questions on this? Perfect. Solve the system. And graph, graph and plot. So here's the system, 2x plus y equals 1, x squared plus y equals 4. 
Can I use elimination? Just because one of them can go away very nicely, I could. Uh, we can use substitution as well. So let's do negative 2x minus y equals negative 1. And then x squared plus y equals 4. Just because these two go away and there is no other y anywhere. So then I have x squared <coughs> minus 2x equals 3. But you can say, no, I don't want to use substitution. I want to use elimination. Um, I don't want to use elimination. I want to use substitution. We can do that too. So you choose. Is this good enough before we continue? Yeah, yeah, Is this OK? Mm -hmm. OK. So then I have x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0 because it's quadratic, and I have to set it equal to 0. So then x minus 3 and x plus 1. So x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. But now I have to go back here and solve for y. So I have that 2x plus y equals 1, or y equals negative 2x plus 1. From here, I move 2x. So how much is y when x is 3? x is 3. y is negative 6 plus 1, negative 5. So 3, negative 5. When x is negative 1, y is 3. So negative 1 comma 3. Negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Now they want us to graph Um, it says, graph each equation and plot the points of intersection. I want to start by plotting the points of intersection, of, of course. 3 comma negative 5, 3 comma negative 5, and negative 1 comma 3. Now I'm going to graph x squared plus y equals 4, or y equals negative x squared plus 4. How do I graph this? We graphed it many times. It's x squared, then flipped, and then up 4. So it will be x squared, flipped, and up 4. So it's here. Of course, it has to go through this. And it will intersect at negative 2 and 2. So here's my problem. And of course, it has to go through this point as well. So this is the y equals negative x squared plus 4. Now the line, I don't care, because it's a line, 2x plus y. It must pass through these two points. I don't have to determine anything else. So this is uh, 2x plus y equals 1. This is what I would have done. Any questions? Yes. Oh, because um, I know that when uh, y is 0, I get negative x squared plus 4 equals 0, x squared equals 4, x equals plus or minus 2. And when y, when x is 0, I get y equals 4, which we knew. 
So I plotted these points. But yes, you can take the 2x plus y equals 1 and say when x is 0, y is 1. So this is the point. And then you say when y is 0, x is 1 half, and it's here. So this is the x-intercept 0, 1, and the, uh, the y-intercept 0, 1, and the x-intercept 1 half, comma, 0 from here. But I already had these two. And when I graph a line, I only need two points. But they must be there, and that's correct. Go. Next one. Uh, let's solve the system using Gauss-Jordan or Gaussian elimination with back substitution, whatever you want. Just any row operation. Yeah, they are just want to make sure that you're not uh, coming up with stuff on the calculator. So they're forcing, they're forcing Gauss, Gauss Jordan. I'm not forcing Gauss Jordan. Here they are forcing Gauss Jordan. I'm so you still know row operations if you do elimination. So if you want to do it all the way with Gauss Jordan, fine. If you want to stop in the middle, I think it's more work. But I still accomplished my goal, meaning. I taught you how to do a row operations. Even if you just do half, I, I'm fine with that. But here they want to force Gauss Jordan all the way. So let's do Gauss Jordan all the way. So of course, the augmented matrix 1, 2, negative 3, negative 2, 1, 4, 3, negative 4, negative 1, and 4, 3, negative 2. Remember, do not deviate from the steps. The steps must be 1 and the corresponding zeros, 1 and the corresponding zeros, and 1 and the corresponding zeros. There is no other sequence of steps. Don't try anything. It's not going to work, unless you do elimination with back substitution, Gaussian elimination. Okay? So I'm happy for that. So then row 1 would be multiplied and added to row 2, and row 1 multiplied and added to row 3. So what do I multiply row 1 by to eliminate the 2 in row 2? Of course. And to eliminate negative 3. Very good. I have to copy the row that I'm using. This is the only one that does not change. So let's do this together. 1 times negative 2 plus 2. Perfect. Negative 2 times negative 2 plus 1. 3 times negative 2 minus 4. Awesome. 4 times negative 2. Negative 8 plus 3. Perfect. And I'm happy. Why am I happy? Because I can divide by 5 without no danger of fractions. Perfect. 1 times 3 minus 3. Negative 2 times 3 plus 4. Perfect. 3 times 3 minus 1. 4 times 3 minus 2. Nice and friendly. Yes, I will divide row 2 now because I have to get it ready. What am I uh, dividing it by? 5 indeed. We've done so many problems that now you know this by heart. So 0, 1, negative 2, negative 1. Is this OK so far? Mm -hmm. So I copied everything else. I only divided this row by 5. So I got 1 and negative 2 and negative 1. So now I'm using this to eliminate this and this. So I have to use row 2 twice. And 
in both cases, yes. Convenient. Good. I copy row two. This is the only one that doesn't change. And of course, this can never change. If I go back and change this, then I'm never going to solve. 1 times 2 minus 2. Negative 2 times 2 plus 3. Negative 1 times 2 plus 4. 1 times 2 minus 2. Negative 2 times 2 plus 8. Right? Negative 2 times 2, negative 4 plus 8. Good. Um, negative 1 times 2 plus 10. Good. So now this is done. I can't go back and change anything. If I do, I'm not on the right track. And I'm happy now that I can change this row, dividing row 3 by 4. And now you can. That's fine. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 2. So finally, row 3 plus row 1 and row 3 plus row 2. What do I multiply row 3 by to eliminate the negative 1? Indeed. And what do I multiply for eliminating negative 2? That's it. And this is the final step. I copy the last row. And of course, everything else that I already built, that cannot change. 1 times 1 minus 1. 2 times 1 plus 2. Perfect. 1 times 2 minus 2. 2 times 2 minus 1. It appears. Don't be just happy, happy just yet, because I don't know. So easy to make a mistake, right? We have to go back to the original problem with 4, 3, 2. 4, 3, 2. 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2. Ready? 4 minus 6 is negative 2 plus 6, yes. 8 plus 3, 11. 11 minus 8, yes. Negative 12 plus 12, nice. Minus 2 equals negative 2, yes. So now, only now you can say yes. You said this might be on the test. The uh, Gauss-Jordan? Yeah. It will be on the test. Well, like, with this type of Gauss-Jordan yes. question, like this type where it's like kind of fill in the blank? Uh, no, the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> you know it. I'm so dangerous. <laughs> you do know it. You proved it. Next question. Can you do number three? Number three. Number three. What does it say? Number three, number three, number three, number three. Yes. So x cubed plus 2x squared minus 36x minus 72 equals 0. It's a polynomial equation. And of course, four terms. What does that mean? By grouping. So from the first two, I factor out x squared to get x plus 2. If I don't get an x plus 2 from the other two, I may be on the wrong track, number one or it's not factorable. But I still have to 
uh, to uh, try the first with the third, and the second with the fourth, and the first and the last, so other options. So now, only now I look. I need factor and number, uh, sign and factor. And you cannot Negative change 36. this. Negative 36. Let's check. We cannot just fabricate it, right? Negative 36 times x and negative 36 times 2. It's good. So now x plus 2 becomes the common factor, x squared minus 36. But of course, I should have asked you from the very beginning, what is the degree and how many solutions we have to find? Three. Three solutions. Very good. So then how do I factor this? And then I get three solutions. Perfect. And there are three options. x equals, x equals, x equals. Six. Seven. Seven. Very good. Well done. Number seven. Yes. The piecewise defined function. So f of x, one half x squared for less than three, and three x minus four for x greater than or equal to three. When we're asked to graph a function, our first concern is always a domain because we don't know what to plug in and where. So in the situation of a piecewise defined function, I recommend changing this into negative infinity to 3, and this into 3 to infinity, for two reasons, if you remember. We said because it's easier to read a domain, and also because this will become an open point, and this will become a closed point. So that's very important. If you're using my method, if you have your own, that's fine too. Okay. So it appears that the domain is all real numbers. I have to put 0 in the table, and I have to put 3 in the table. And remember the symbols. This is facing left, and the bracket is facing right. So I'm re-emphasizing that I'm using negative 1 half x squared for the first part, and I'm using 3x minus 4 for the second part. You can say, but I already see them. They're up there. Yes, but I think it's e Sometimes these may not be given in the correct order. They may be given this. And who knows? You may plug in into in the wrong function, in the wrong expression. So then when I plug in 0, I get 0. Oh, it's not minus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. See? I even copied it incorrectly. I am hungry. So nine, nine halves. And if I plug in uh, negative 2 and 2, I get a nice number because negative 2 squared is 4, 4 over 2 is 2, as well as on the other side. Now I plug in 3, and I get 9 minus 4, which is 5. And I will plug in 4, and I get 12 minus 4, which is 8. So negative 2, 2. 0, 0, 2, 2, and 3, 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.5. And this is an open point. I know how to graph the parabola. It's a vertical shrinking of the graph by a factor of 1 half. And then on the other side, 3, 5. And four comma eight, six, seven, eight. So the 
after this would be C. Yes. Okay. Yes. How did you get the number root equal to the negative two? I just realized that uh, if I you choose a number that is uh, divisible by 2, and then I will get that. I have to plug in 0 no matter what. And I know that this is x squared. Shrink. It, it, it's vertical shrinking by a factor of 1 half. The 1 half x squared. I have to plug in 3 to get 9 halves, which is an open point. And I have to plug in 3 on the other side, and I get the full point, which is 3, 5. For the range, the range will be from 0 to infinity, because this continues forever.